Hello folks, I'm back with another one. Um, I hope you're well, I hope you and your family are good. Um, in this one folks, um, I will warn you, it's probably going to be a little bit um, close to the bone for some people perhaps. It's probably going to be a bit uh, thought provoking for me, um, maybe a little bit of upset. Um, but the aim of this video is is not, and I stress this, it's not, please feel sorry for me. It's not, oh, poor little me. It's not anything like that. And I've toyed with making this video. I've toyed with the idea for quite some time since it happened. Um, and I've been both ways, but ultimately what happened, I believe, uh, me speaking about it <clears throat> can all it can act like a a sort of warning sign for others of what can happen, but more so, I think people who can relate to this will know and be able to hopefully put things in place because the end is a sad one, and it's one where um I don't want anyone else to go through it and that's why I've ultimately decided to make this video because if it just stops one person going through what I saw then it's been worthwhile. Some of the words that I, I talk about, some of the things I say may not come across properly but it's a difficult subject. so. Stick with it, folks. If 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 you're happy to, and I'll um, I'll begin. So, right, I I've spoken on this channel extensively about my addictions and um, coming across people with addiction. I have interviewed people who have suffered from the hands of addiction, um, but what I've not probably done is mention that first hand I have witnessed addiction taking hold of someone and ultimately costing their lives. Someone close to me, you know, an uncle of mine, which is more, it was more like my brother um, because of our upbringing and things. So I refer to him as my brother, but he's my uncle. Um, so yeah, I don't want to name names out of respect for the family, but um, I I wanted to put this out there for the reasons I've mentioned, but also um, I was involved a lot along the way, in a good way and a bad way, and it also highlights what addiction can do in that sense as well, which as I speak on you'll come to find out. So, watching someone pass away through addiction is probably one of the most painful things to see and realise that no matter how much help you give or try to give, you're powerless to stop in many respects. This person, my brother, um, was a man that had a stiff upper lip you know a stiff upper lip in regards to mental health in regards to feelings emotions and you hear that a lot um where a stiff upper lip would mean they don't open up they don't acknowledge emotions in a way that they can speak about them um and they keep th things in to a point where Either it boils over and it comes out, or they escape those feelings, them emotions, and they escape into a world of often addiction. And this was the case for my brother, in 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 my opinion. And so the 
my brother lost his job at um, at a, a workplace which was more than a workplace. The workplace gave him a, a family outside of the family, the camaraderie between work colleagues, um, the banter, the the laughs and the jokes, um, and the pranks and things like that. It all uh, helped my brother get through his day. It all helped my brother to have a, a happy balance between working and, and normal life. And it, it certainly, you know, when you would speak to him within, you know, five minutes, he would be talking about work and it meant a lot to him. Um, but unfortunately, some years ago now, maybe six or seven years ago, he um, he lost his job, he got made redundant and the impact that had on him was twofold really um, in terms of financial is one thing but he lost all that that bubble, that that support at work where I don't mean he would sit down and talk about his feelings but the support in terms of having a focus to go to work in the first place having a focus on the job, having a laugh with his mates at work, speaking about random stuff, can, you know, just getting getting sort of in a group and having a laugh. and a, You know, I think what, what I'm trying to say is having that network of people who he trusted, who he could have a laugh with, and who made his days easier, he lost that, as well as the financial... Um, impact that he suffered on, upon me made redundant and that was a major thing for him um, he liked to drink before that as most people do um, and again I go back to stiff up a lip because rather than speak about the difficulties he was facing on being made redundant it would be outwardly you know, stuff them. I'll I'll go to work here or go to work there. Um, but all the while, I think deep within was uh, a man suffering, um, and he lost his his he lost one of his parents. Uh, it it's both his parents really, but he won't. He lost one of his parents around that time, um, and that again really impacted him. Um, he lost his mum and in that losing his mum you know he was strong for the family at that point arm round which you know it, it did show strength in that point but really inside he was hurting and his behaviour from afar at that point was one that he would isolate himself and he would drink a lot and over time, through drinking a lot, he started to become dependent on alcohol. Um, to the point where going to work for other companies would become quite a task for him, um, both mentally and physically eventually. Um, and just understanding things and, and getting a basic... Um, way of life working again it was becoming difficult for him um, because he was addicted to drink but he was also experiencing all these emotions which was very much uncomfortable and, and negative and sad for him um, and of course with experiencing those the cycle went on he had a drink to forget those and eventually he ended up in hospital and I stole some money off him, which you forgive me for. And then I did it again. And that impacted my relationship with him for quite some time. But over time, he, oh, I was disgusted. How could I do it? Over time,
Um, I got my relationship back with him. And then it was a case of him moving in with us, me and my wife. And I saw day to day drinking habits just take over, take him over. And as much as he tried to get his life back on track, he struggled. And he, the drink had, by this point, started to do damage. Basically, damage was already done. And physically, mentally, he was struggling to recover. So even periods off the drink would still leave him with physical problems of drink. He would have um, a lot of pain in his back. He would bleed from the mouth. He would bleed from the other end. And that's through drinking spirits. That's through drinking lager. That's just drinking. Caused all these problems. And the thing is, my brother was a really outgoing person up until this, in terms of he would love to go out riding motorbikes and quads, take his dog for a walk for miles every day, both his dogs. He would go miles walking. He was really active in that sense, and he loved it. But now he couldn't walk, really, without pain. He couldn't function in a way that he could look after his bills and things. Even basic things like, you know, setting an alarm on a phone, sometimes he would struggle with. And drink had done its, its, you know, its damage. And I tried to put in help for him, many, many, many phone calls to the local services, warning them that he's struggling and he could die. I've had doctors on the phone saying, get him to hospital because he could die. And again, he had this stiff upper lip that I'll be okay. And if I'm not, so what? He'd given up. He'd given up on life. Outwardly. And unfortunately, when he was in hospital, when he would go in for five or six weeks at a time, because that's what alcohol damage can do to you, when he come out, it may be a little bit better, but it wasn't enough, unfortunately. And then slowly but surely, the 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 damage would take hold again, and it became to the point where he couldn't move. He couldn't um, move far. Really, he couldn't walk. He certainly couldn't take his dogs for a walk, which he loved. Um, he couldn't uh, drive. He couldn't, and. It, all these things he couldn't do took away his freedom. It took away any chance of working again. It took away any chance of engaging in help. Um, and I say engaging in help. He could engage in help, of course. But the motivation to do that was from already being low to almost non-existent because these physical symptoms and these mental um, symptoms of the damage that alcohol had done um, and the pain and torture it was going through, it sort of demoted it. It took away any motivation left to change his life. And unfortunately, I got a phone call towards the end of it. And I must stress... I did try to help, help him, and that's not to say well done to me, pat me on the back. It's not, you know, I would help anybody as I'm trying to do now. Um, but the services involved, this is what I'm getting at. As much as I tried to help him, the services involved said, while ever he's got capacity to make his own decisions, we can't do anything. And that's where I am angry because this person made decisions and did things that would make you question his capacity to do stuff, to to keep himself safe and preserve his life. And that's the reason I was told they wouldn't intervene, um, such as sectioning or such as um, housing him in a supported um, environment. So, yeah, I, I'm not 
trying to lose track of the story here, but um, and when I say story, it's not a story like a, a fairy tale. It's a story of misery and pain and hurt from losing a family member to addiction. But in the help of helping just one person. So I, I am going to miss things out um, about the help and things that he did get because um, I'm still dealing with the authorities on that but the more more could have been done and has got to be done to stop anyone else going through what he went through um, but in the end he was struggling to get out and I got a phone call he's in hospital and they said look his liver is so far da damaged that for him to come out of hospital, he needs a lot of things to come to go right, but one thing going wrong could be fatal. And for six weeks or seven weeks, he was in hospital, and it was a point of where he would show signs of recovery, but not enough. Um, he was placed on end of life care because the transplant, liver transplant, wasn't an option for him, he wasn't eligible um, and then eventually he come off end of life care, he showed signs of improvement um, for a week or two but then his liver started to, sorry his kidneys started to pack up and unfortunately multiple organ failure um, it leads one way really and unfortunately yeah, the end that he had was a very, very, very painful experience for him and for us. Um, he passed away in a lot of pain. I don't want to be graphic out of respect for the family, but at the same time, I do want to be graphic because if you're out there and you're struggling, particularly with drink, please don't, please don't get to this stage please open up because the last time I saw my brother it was taking one breath in and on the exhale it was screaming with pain and it was in agony and it, it's a it's a you can't, you, you, I can't stress enough. I understand how hard it is to stop. But by not opening up, by having the stiff upper lip as I've mentioned, this is what could happen to you or to someone you love. You don't want to end that way. Even in his last few days, he showed signs of recovery and um, getting better. You know, getting getting better, but the damage was done, done by alcohol, and he'd not had a drink for twelve months. I don't think in, before he died, but the damage was done. I can't stress enough how dangerous it is to keep your feelings inside if you are drinking to escape, if you are addicted to alcohol or any addiction, but in this case alcohol because doing that and escaping to drink you're doing untold damage to your body I've been through it to a much lesser extent but you are and through him not having a drink for 12 months you might think well it started to repeat, you know, repair itself but no the damage was done he couldn't walk in the end, he couldn't really talk properly in the end. It had impacted on his brain function. And the painful ending which he met was something no one should ever go through. I hope by me saying this, and again, the family's wishes are probably not for me to put this out. But I just want to help one person not go through and meet the end that my brother helped, you know, finished. Um, 
it's not nice. The damage can be done relatively easily. Please, please, please open up to someone about your feelings. If you're depressed, if you've got concerns, debts, anything it is, speak to someone, speak to a professional. If you want to reach out and speak to me, my Twitter's in the description. Follow me, follow me, I'll follow you back. I'll send you a DM or you'll send me a DM and we'll have a chat. I'm no expert, but I'm happy to listen. But please speak to someone because alcohol, addiction in general, it can take your life. It really, really can take your life. This was four or five weeks ago. And it, it's it's very raw, as you, as, as you can probably tell. But it's also very fresh in my mind what the end is if you don't get help and you continue to not break the cycle of addiction, not work at addiction, and not, not only for you, but for your family. Family who have to go through it with you. Please, please, please open up. If this video just helps one person not go through it, then it's been worth it. And I'm sorry for rambling on for quite some time now. If you've got this far, I really appreciate it. I know you, you've took something from it. Do let me know in the comments. I will um, read comments. I will react to them. Um, if you can, leave a like on the video. Not that it's a subject to like, but it gets the videos in front. It helps to get the videos spread out in front of more people who it can help. And if you please would subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. Thank you for taking the time to, to listen. If you have any questions about anything I've said, leave me them in the comments or reach out on Twitter. I'm more than happy to answer them. And um, I'll see you on the next one, folks.